It's Wednesday, December 30th, and this is now on HNN. We do have to close the budget gap. The start of state worker furloughs has been postponed, but remains on the minds of many. Is there objection to the modification? Object. Democrats are fighting for a clean bill to up the amount of money in COVID stimulus checks. I'm Skyler Henry on Capitol Hill, where the Senate Majority Leader has a bill of his own with relief, but with additional measures. That's just outrageous. We've learned Hawaii heiress Abigail Kawananakoa received a $142,000 federal loan meant for struggling small businesses. These stories plus a large winter swell triggers a high surf warning. That's coming up on This Is Now. We begin with this new video into our newsroom today from Oahu's North Shore, where there was a water rescue. This all took place around 7.30 this morning at the site known as Rock Piles. Officials say two people needed some help. They report that a swimmer was trying to rescue a bodyboarder who got trapped outside the surf zone. By about 8.10, Ocean Safety had brought both people to shore safely. Thank you for watching. This is now good afternoon, everyone. A large northwest swell has triggered a high surf warning for some islands. This is a live look at pipeline. The National Weather Service says the warning is in effect until 6 a.m. tomorrow. Surf on the north shores of Oahu, Kauai and Niihau is expected to reach 25 to 30 feet, while 15 to 20 foot waves are expected for west facing shores. Now the earlier high surf advisory for the north and west shores of Molokai and the north shores of Maui has also been extended. Like you said, this is a live video feed coming into the digital center of Pipeline, and we're seeing some pretty good breaks. There are not a lot of surfers in the water though yet, so we'll just have to wait and see. You want to keep in mind for beach goers, expect strong breaking waves, shore breaks, and a strong possibility of rip currents. So stay safe if you're out there. We're seeing a lot of trouble in the water today, right Ash? Yep, and Coast Guard crews have joined city rescue teams in the search for a free diver who went missing off Oahu's south shore last night. Now the search area is focused off the reef runway at Kehi Lagoon. Airport rescue crews are also taking part in the search. The diver was only described as a 51 year old man, five feet, two inches tall, 220 pounds and was last seen wearing dive gear. His friend told the Coast Guard they were both diving in the area when they got separated. Mariners have been alerted to keep an eye out for him and anyone with information on the man's whereabouts should contact Sector Honolulu at 808-842-2600. And on Maui, authorities say two divers died in the ocean off Haiku. They were with three others when they ran into trouble at around 11.30 a.m. near the big surf break known as Jaws or Peahi. Three of them made it safely back to shore. They pulled the other two divers out of the water, and that's when firefighters and lifeguards began CPR. MFD says one of the divers is in his 20s. He died at the scene. The other, a 23-year-old man, was pronounced dead at Maui Memorial Medical Center. Now to our other big story. You know, there's a new strain of coronavirus everyone's talking about. It was first discovered in the UK, and now it's being reported in the US, the first case being yesterday in Colorado. And now the AP is reporting another case in California. Elise Preston has a wrap up of all the developments happening on the mainland. Senior citizens camped out at a COVID vaccine site in Florida, where Governor Ron DeSantis has prioritized the state's 4 million elderly. You have people who fought in World War II, survived the Holocaust. Um, these are people that we've got to stand with and, and prioritize. So far, the vaccine rollout has been just a fraction of the original goal of 20 million injections by the end of the year. Officials with Operation Warp Speed admit the distribution is lower than they'd hoped. We absolutely are, are advocates of higher uptake. All eyes are on Colorado after the state reported the first U.S. case of a more contagious variant of the virus first seen in the U.K., a man in his 20s with no travel history. Our public health officials are working diligently to identify anyone else who may have been exposed and any other potential cases to test them to see if there's a chain of transmission. In the California epicenter, Los Angeles County reported its highest number of COVID hospitalizations in a single day, topping 7,000. 
Here in New York, Times Square is setting up for a very different kind of New Year's Eve. No crowns are allowed, just a selection of frontline workers and their families. But some traditions will go on. Workers are putting the finishing touches on the New Year's Eve ball and did a test run of the giant confetti drop. As the total number of infections in the U.S. climbs towards 20 million, New York's mayor is asking people to enjoy the festivities from home and says the vaccine will be the game changer that launches the city's recovery. Elise Preston, CBS News, New York. July 1st, that's the new start date for the furlough of state workers. It was supposed to begin in two days, but Governor Ige now says he'll be able to delay it thanks to new pandemic relief in that bill passed by Congress. Hawaii is expected to receive about $2 billion from it, but the governor says that money will only go so far. We're running through the reserves that we've had. Legislature authorized uh, depleting the rainy day fund till um, it's virtually empty. Um, and we are borrowing to make payroll for the first time in the state's history. So if that federal relief bill didn't pass, many workers would have been forced to take two unpaid days each month starting in January. That would have amounted to about a 9% pay cut. That has the state teachers union breathing a sigh of relief. We know that furloughs, when we did them in 2009, had a devastating impact not only on Hawaii's economy, but on our schools that directly led to the teacher shortage crisis and prolonged the economic recession. Governor Ige says even with the federal help, he is still expecting a $1.4 billion budget deficit. The U.S. Treasury Secretary says $600 COVID relief checks are going out today. This as the Senate debates whether to give Americans more pandemic help. Skylar Henry is on Capitol Hill. Is there objection to the modification? Object. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell blocked an effort by the president and Democrats to raise COVID relief checks from $600 to $2,000. These Republicans in the Senate seem to have an endless tolerance for other people's sadness. A growing number of Republicans, including two senators in Georgia's runoff elections, say they will support the larger checks, but most GOP senators oppose them. The Senate will be back in session this afternoon. Last night, Senator McConnell filed new legislation tying larger checks to restrictions President Trump wants on tech companies and the creation of a commission to review election results. President Trump is still at his Florida resort, but has Georgia on his mind. Monday, he'll travel to Georgia and rally for the two Republican senators fighting to keep their seats and the Senate under Republican control. President-elect Biden will also be in Georgia Monday, ahead of the January 5th runoffs. The president-elect blames the Trump administration for the slow pace of vaccinating Americans. So far, just over 2 million doses administered as opposed to the 20 million forecast by the Trump administration. If he continues to move as it is now, it's going to take years, not months, to vaccinate the American people. Yesterday, Biden promised 100 million vaccinations in the first 100 days of his term. On Twitter, President Trump has repeatedly blamed states for the slow distribution. The federal government vaccine distribution agency, Operation Warp Speed, pointed to other factors. It's been just 12 days. There's two holidays. There's been three major snowstorms. Operation Warp Speed says approximately 14 million doses have been delivered to states. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Essential workers traveling to Honolulu with quarantine exemptions will now have to take three mandatory tests after arriving. One test will be at the airport and two more in the following two days. Those essential workers will also be required to install a mobile app on their phones and check in for 10 days after arriving. If an essential worker tests positive, they'll be required to quarantine. Yesterday on the show, we talked about how slow tourism was for November. Today, Howard Dykus takes a look at December. Yeah, it's basically as bad as November was. The state has posted arrivals through Christmas to the start of this week, and the count, under 256,000, is down 73% from the same juncture last year. It's almost the same as November. Uh, Japan arrivals are down 98%, and that is also very close to what November gave us. It's counterintuitive, but vaccines may actually be hurting our economy in the short term. Jerry Gibson, for years the top local Hilton executive, he now manages Turtle Bay, thinks it'll be 8 to 10 months before tourism seriously rekindles. Keith Vieira, for years the top Sheridan Starwood exec, 
for the whole region, says vaccines will be great eventually, but for now, people are waiting for the shots before they travel. And the GM of the Manalani Resort says occupancy is 30 to 40 percent, but those who come are not rate resistant. They are only concerned about safety protocols. There's now more time to use those $500 city grocery cards. Yesterday was the deadline, but officials have now extended it until January 31st. The rollout of the cards was messy and confusing. They were initially delayed due to shipping issues, then many people had trouble activating them. One of Hawaii's wealthiest heiresses was receiving more than $140,000 in loans intended for small businesses struggling during the pandemic. Abigail Kawananakoa received a PPP loan, even though she was getting more than a million dollars a month in income. Rick Desog reports. I'm going to determine whether I'm... Abigail Kawananakoa says the three-year legal battle over her fortune drained her bank account. She says she received a $142,000 Paycheck Protection Program loan to keep nine of her staffers employed during the pandemic. But her trustee, James Wright, says most of the 94-year-old Hawaiian royalty descendants' employees were actually her personal staff and that the loan wasn't needed because her trust was paying their salaries. Investigative reporter Ian Lynn says he's appalled that money meant for businesses struggling during the pandemic could be used this way. This loan is being used to pay for the personal ex household expenses, basically, uh, of a wealthy heiress. That's that's just outrageous. Kawana Nakoa lost control over her $215 million fortune two years ago after a judge ruled that she didn't have the capacity to manage her affairs. Her attorney says she needed the loan because Wright racked up $7 million in costs during the legal battle that led to the ruling. He said, quote, Ms. Kawana Nakoa borrowed money to ensure that her staff in Honolulu was paid during the pandemic. Ms. Kawana Nakoa may be forced to close her beloved Lakeview Quarter Horse Ranch in California because the trust litigation has drained all of her available money. But her trustee says closing the horse ranch was her own idea. Court records also show that Kawana Nakoa still receives about $14 million a year in income from her trust stock in real estate developer James Campbell Company. The loan was issued before a state judge appointed a conservator to manage Kawana Nakoa's financial affairs. Attorney Megan Cow, who represents the heiress's former housekeepers, says she hopes the conservator will investigate how the PPP loan was obtained. I cross-examined Ms. Kawana Nokoa for hours, and it was very clear that she's not capable of managing her own finances. You know, so who filled out this application for her? If somebody else filled out that application on her behalf and had her sign it, and included false misstatements in the application for the PPP loan, now she is looking at personal criminal liability. Rick Desog, Hawaii News Now. Security officials say there's been a large explosion at the airport in the southern Yemeni city of Aden, shortly after a plane carrying the newly formed cabinet landed there. At least 22 people were killed and 50 were wounded in the blast. The source of the blast was not immediately clear and no group claimed responsibility for attacking the airport. AP footage from the scene shows members of the government delegation disembarking as the blast shook the grounds. No one on the government plane was hurt, but many ministers rushed back inside the plane or ran down the stairs seeking shelter. Four days after a homemade bomb rocked the city of Nashville, federal authorities are beginning to piece together a picture of what happened. Deborah Alferone has the very latest. Police were warned almost a year and a half ago that alleged Nashville bomber Anthony Warner was making explosives. According to a police report obtained by CBS affiliate in Nashville, WTVF, the tip coming in from his distraught girlfriend in August 2019. The report says when officers responded to the woman's home after she had threatened to kill herself, she told him Warner, quote, was building bombs in the RV trailer at his residence. The report indicates the woman's attorney was also there, an attorney who had also represented Warner. She was so convincing that morning and so distraught that I decided in her front yard in the middle of all those police officers on the spot that even though it was a former client of mine that somebody needed to go check him out right then. And I made a separate report to the police. 
The police report reveals officers went to Warner's home on Bakerstown Road. They say they saw the RV, but it was fenced off, and they couldn't see inside of it. They were never able to make contact with Warner. The report was later deemed unfounded. I have no idea what they did or didn't do. But it's pretty obvious to me that somebody didn't do something they were supposed to do. A police spokesman told WTVF that officers saw no evidence of a crime and had no authority to enter his home or fenced property. The spokesman also says police forwarded the report and Warner's information to the FBI, but the agency found no records on Warner and no additional information came to the department's attention after August 2019. Deborah Alfarone, CBS News. Let's get you now to those latest coronavirus numbers. The state health department is reporting 108 new cases today and no new deaths. The breakdown by island shows two cases on the big island, 86 on Oahu, 17 on Maui, one on Kauai and two out of state. Now to the latest on the new Kilauea eruption. USGS scientists say the eruption appears to be opposite of what happened in 2018. Instead of magma leaving the summit, there are signs that it is returning there from the east rift zone. The geology team is investigating. They've collected rocks and fragments from the current eruption to see if they can track where the magma has been. All right, and USGS posted this to Twitter this morning, and I wanted to share it with you. It says there has been some changes to that lava lake. It's now at 593 feet deep, and get this, the amount of volume of lava that's pumped out, 5.2 billion gallons. Wow. That's billion gallons. They say the vent's still splattering on the west side, the western vent, and there is still some lava flow under the crusted over channel very cool right mm -hmm. very very cool everyone's talking about that surf outside let's get it over to guy hoggy with an update on those conditions how's it on this wednesday we've got a really nice weather on tap there's a couple of sources of moisture that will likely get caught up in the trade wind flow and that'll bring us some overnight and early morning showers for the windward sides over the next several days. Leeward sides, we might get the occasional spillover, but over the next seven days, rainfall totals will be very, very light and insignificant, and that's good news. Now, the trade winds will be running at surplus levels. They'll pick up today to about 15 to 20, getting even stronger by tomorrow. So the, first, so the start of 2021 is going to be a little bit windy. So for today, trade winds will begin picking up speed to about 15 to 20. Lots of leeward sunshine. High temperatures still running a little on the cool side into the mid to lower 80s might be a little warmer over in Kahului, Maui and high surf warnings have been posted for north and west shores of Kauai and Oahu maybe upwards of 30 feet today up in the country not a great day though a little wobbly so far not a lot of spots spots are working even though though uh, this is better left to the professionals and the really experienced guys and the east shores will be picking up uh, as the trade winds pick up the trade wind swells will pick up as well so we got breezy trade winds entering into the new year. And those breezy trade winds will help to disperse all the fireworks smoke. And that's good news for the overnight hours tomorrow and Friday. And those breezy trade winds are going to hang on into the early part of next week. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. 10 inches of snow, flight delays, and road closures. Shaquille Brewster takes a look at the severe weather hitting the mainland. From Nebraska to Minnesota, to Indiana and everywhere in between. A winter wallop closing out 2020, blanketing more than 40 million Americans. In Chicago, conditions deteriorating by the minute. My wife won't even leave the house with this kind of weather. <laughs> Heavy snow quickly making for a very messy commute. A steady douse of freezing rain quickly turning busy roads into sheets of ice with more than 200 snowplows struggling to keep up. In Iowa, a rare thunder snow seen rolling in overnight. Strong winds whipping up piles of snow overhead and quiet farms turning into frosty winter wonderlands. Some counties there still under snow emergency orders this morning. And in Omaha, cars seen wildly zigzagging down snowy roads as dangerous whiteout conditions on one major highway saw vehicles spinning out, left waiting for tow trucks to pull them out of snowbanks. While on side streets, friendly neighbors helping nearby drivers get back in motion. Hazardous icy conditions remain a concern this morning in much of the region, 
like in Kansas City, where Christmas ornaments turned into icicles. The year-end storm, another 2020 headache for some, but for others, a chance to get out and have a little fun. Sledding looks fun, but I am so sorry to all my mainland friends no, because thank you. we got some good weather here pretty mm -hmm. much. All right, we are talking food always on This Is Now, and now we have an idea of what foods really surged amid the pandemic. That's because Nielsen's research came out with their research, their data, and it says that trendy foods really topped the list, and we're talking about those alternatives. You know, oat milk jumped 200% in sales. I have to say, I hadn't really heard of oat milk. I don't think I've before had this oat year. milk. I've had it now, but it's a new thing for me, mm. so very trendy. And other things like Impossible Burgers, I love, and those alternative meats. Sales of yeast also soared a whopping mm. 98% because people try to be bakers mm -hmm. like me and fail, but you still have to buy that yeast, right? Yeah, making me hungry. Very interesting. So do you think you have good taste in music, but others tend to disagree with you? Well, now yeah. you can validate your style or find out if it's totally cringeworthy thanks to a new bot. How it works, you give the bot access to your Spotify account and it will analyze your choices. Now, if the bot sees too much music from a certain artist, it will promptly let you know. It will also label your taste in music with categories like trying too hard or embarrassing. <laughs> now, many people are starting to share their results on social media, even if they're getting roasted in the process. I would never roast you I always like your playlist I don't need a bot to judge me <laughs> no you don't <laughs> so we're talking New Year's right that's and right more food so eating good sashimi is a New Year's tradition here in Hawaii but how much will fish cost you this year we sent Casey Len to go find out it was a busy morning here at the fish auction and in the times we've been here throughout the pandemic to check on the industry definitely seemed a lot more vibrant and a lot busier uh, when we were here this morning and some of that could be because of the new year holiday with all the folks getting ready to get some good fresh sashimi uh, but it late into the morning still a lot of action at uh, the united fishing agency and boats uh, offloading here uh, late into the morning so that's good news we talked to some of the buyers here about what people can can expect to pay for the price of fresh tuna. We brought in some bluefin, so that's on our high side, you know, 35, almost $40 a pound. And the big eyes, the local big eyes, probably my guess is about 30, 35, depends on what, what I get it for today. Um, but on the on the other end, we'll probably have some from, I would say from 12.95 and up. So, and several grades in between. And many feel the market is slowly starting to recover. And a lot of that is due to the close to $3 million in federal CARES Act money. I talked to Michael Goto of the United Fishing Agency about what that money meant to help get them by. It was crucial that uh, we got some kind of uh, government assistance to persevere through, you know, the, uh, really the, the core of the pandemic. Uh, so fortunately we had uh, support through uh, the city and county, uh, through the fish and dish program, which really help support um, both the fishing vessels to incentivize them to keep on going fishing even though they could potentially lose money as well as the market itself um, keeping the you know the baseline price uh, up a little bit. And Guy Tomashiro of Tomashiro's Market also said that people are buying smaller platters so a lot of folks are coming in and actually treating themselves to some of that nicer uh, bluefin tuna so that higher quality because they're gathering in small groups ahead of the New Year's holiday. Reporting at the Fish Auction, I'm Casey Lund. Now back to you. Thanks, Casey. I wanted to take you back out live to Pipeline. Not many waves coming in in this set right now, but we've seen some action out there. Just keep in mind there's a high surf warning in effect right now until tomorrow. So we'll keep monitoring that and look for the latest coming up at first at 4 on KHNL. You guys have a safe afternoon. Aloha.